I am greeting you today for this introduction, because introductions are the time used to greet those that listen, and because you are listening, you are hearing this introduction, which is being used to greet you. It has been a real pleasure having you for an extended stay in Outpost Z, because you stayed here for more time than most visitors do, and over that time you stayed here as a visitor, we have had great pleasure in having you because most visitors leave or are not good visitors. We hope you have enjoyed the time in Outpost Ed and all of our strange denizens who are only strange to you really, but very normal to us because your strange is different than our strange and you are strange to us because we are not normal to you. But then we ask what is normal or strange as that changes based on the perspective of who is interpreting normal or strange. To us, having lips and teeth are strange to communicate with because lips and teeth are for eating, not communicating, since we communicate with our crystals which are not lips or teeth, but they are crystals used to communicate. Yet, it is our differences that make us interesting, because different is interesting, because new things are new experiences and new experiences are interesting differences. It is because of these interesting differences that we have enjoyed having you as visitors because your differences are interesting and not bad like some other visitors we have had who were different but not good. It is exciting to make new friends from interesting places since you have come from somewhere that is not here and that makes you an exciting new friend. And because you are not from here, you are visitors who we have enjoyed having because you are good visitors. It is really special to us that you all come from all different and interesting places to visit here at Outpost said because not only are you great visitors, but each and every one of you are special and our friends. You are our friends because you are all special, strange, interesting, and good visitors. We can't thank you enough because the amount of gratitude we feel exceeds the amount of communication possible to express the level of thanks that we feel in our crystals, which is where we house our communication and our feelings which are overwhelmed with gratitude that we can't express properly. So. In short, thank you. Now, before we say goodbye, which we don't want to do because you are special interesting friends and very good and interesting visitors, we still have to say goodbye because it is time for the crew of the Epic Tracer, which is a starship that our new friends use to travel to be special visitors, have to leave and go do special interesting things not at Outpost Z. It makes us sad and proud to see them leave. Because we are sad they are leaving, but proud of what they are doing, which is leaving to go fight the Aslanti, which makes us sad because it is dangerous, and also sad because we don't think we will see them again, because they are leaving to go fight the Aslanti, which means they won't be able to come back here to Outpost Z. So enjoy the Epic Tracer crew's goodbyes to Outpost Z as they say their farewells, while we say our farewells that make us sad and proud because they are leaving and we probably won't see them again. But we are happy to have met these interesting and very good visitors, even though they are arranging their departure. In episode 53, set the controls for the heart of the gun. Y'all, I'm getting pumped. I'm getting excited. Pump I'm it real good. Electric. Well, well, why, Adam? Cause it's festival season here in New Orleans, y'all. And that's bah, true. Bah, bah, it bah, is. Bah. It's very true. <laughs> yeah, we got Mardi Gras coming up, and then shortly after that is Jazz Fest. Mm -hmm. It's about to be lit up in here. Litty I'm titty. I'm I'm Liddy Titty. I promised Adam last year that I would come do the Mardi Gras thing with him this year because I never have. Yeah, yeah, same. There will be some bad decisions made in that city over the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's bad decisions made in that city every day. But of the that's I a mean, true like, story. Of course, right? But comparatively. You know? Well, the thing is, is there gonna, there's going to be people that come here and make bad decisions here because they're not used to it. Right. And they're going to they're, they're going to make some real bad decisions cuz they're going to get in and over their head. Um yeah, but definitely. That I mean, I guess if you know, I'm being honest, I'm a little excited to see some of the bad decisions that get yeah. made. Oh yeah. Uh, that's Train part wreck. of the fun of it, but 
No, what, I, what I'm really excited about is just all the parades and the festivities and the music that's about to be coming through here. It's it's about to be awesome. The Jazz Fest lineup this year is actually really, really good. I got free tickets to one of the weekends, which is awesome. So I actually get to I'm, go to the fairgrounds, you know. I have a, a lineup question, and it's the okay. only, only important one. Will... Mm -hmm. Rob Thomas be playing with Carlos Santana? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, about about 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah maybe, maybe even 15. I mean, if he was, I'd, I'd be saw, there. My, sure. my, one of my managers posted, and it's the funniest shit I've seen all week. It was uh, a joke article. It was like, uh, Rob Thomas and Carlos Santana sweep the Grammys for the 15th year in a row <laughs> with the same song. Yeah, well, the same song. Same song. well yeah. nothing that has would, come no, out in the last Zach, 15 years. What's funny is my exact comment to him was well deserved. <laughs> well deserved. Great, great yeah. minds, my man. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm getting pumped. I do hope that some of y'all come down here for some of the festivities, whether it's Mardi Gras or Jazz Fest or both. I'll be here. Um, but it's I, it just there's a certain there is a certain electricity that starts to generate in the city around this time. I mean, and it's like when New Orleans is at its New Orleansiest. Yeah, yeah, it, it's very true. You know, you're not <laughs> wrong, Josh. I, I know that sounds like nonsense, but. It, yeah, it's, it's like self-evident. You speak yeah. the truth. Yeah. True. We, we hold these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> um, anyways, that electricity ends up carrying over kind of just into daily life, you know, and so like everything just kind of elevates a little bit. So uh, I'm hoping as we go into the back half of this book and the, the really, the, you know, the end of our first season approaches for Southern Tom Fleury and you know, not to say that we're going to be done in five episodes. You know how long we take to do things, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we're going. 55 episodes. Yeah, 48 out of 55 episodes <laughs> will be us just rambling. Um, uh, no, but like, we are going, to, we're going into the, the, the final, the final centerpiece of this thing. You know, you go into Arellos and we're, we're, we're hunting down that, that rune drive, you know, oh, and yeah. I know that we've kind of <laughs> forgot about that. We've Fuck been, that. We're been, boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the hey, champion. Man. I got to defend it. I'm starting hey, to said next, the packed world's champion himself. Mm -hmm. Fell hey, settles man. down with half red living in yeah. tunnels. All right. We'll just, uh, we'll just we'll abandon the rest yeah, we'll, of we'll this. We'll see <laughs> it. We'll see <laughs> it. Let the, let the space Nazis get it. Just let them have it. <laughs> what could go wrong? I just want to say that. Uh, New Orleans having this, you know, je ne sais quoi of electricity is a really flowery way to say everyone's drunk. Everyone's <laughs> drunk. So what he's saying is he wants us to bring that drunken energy to the last part of this book. And I don't know if that's the best call, Adam. Can do. <laughs> I don't think I have much choice over that. That's going to happen whether I <laughs> uh, suggest it or not. Um, but let's just take, let's do a quick recap of like the over arching story real quick so if if you remember way back when you got called to nakondas to bring some supplies fast forward 60 minutes later all right that's the recap we'll see you that's the end of the episode <laughs> no, <laughs> no like wow no, so, so you got you get no you get you got a nakondas and you find out that the aslanti have showed up in this packed worlds because they've tracked this rune drive and they were so determined to get it that they did and they took it and Sedona off of Nakondas into their airspace. You know that this was all spearheaded by a man um, named Zolan Ulavestra and that you know your antics and your activities has certainly caught his attention as you went to a prison that was controlled by him and broke Sedona out and found out that the rune drive wasn't there in that he had been torturing her, having her be tortured to gain, gain information about the rune drive. And the thing about the rune drive is that if the Islanti can figure out how to use it, they can bypass drift travel, which would then make their entire fleet able to like emerge in one place 
you know, and so it's really, really bad news if they can figure it out. What you've also found out is that Zolan has kind of been operating on his own. Um, that he's this isn't entirely sanctioned by the Aslanti uh, Star Empire, that he's doing this on his own for whatever reasons, and that Zeno is somehow, you know, the Zolan thinks that Zeno is the key to figuring out the rune drive. Though, even in the detailed dossiers, he doesn't have any real, real understanding that there's just something that he, he believes is is in Zeno that can help him figure this out and you guys have just kind of found a lot of this information in Outpost Z at Third Eyed Salvage where you realize just how much he's tracking you guys and how much Zeno is might be might be key in all this I'm like the one <laughs> okay <laughs> I know Kung Fu but yeah, I mean, so that's kind of the general over, over story, overarching story. And, you know, Sedona has kind of told you, like, we need to go. And you've, your, your lead is Arelos, you know, that's this, as far as you know, just an asteroid that Zolan bought some time ago and has been going to and from there. He's not there currently, so you have a small window to maybe get there undetected. Um, we know how that'll go. <laughs> yeah. Considering us. Yeah, so... No joke. All that's to say is that you guys have one final day here in Outpost Z to tie up any loose ends because, as Sedona has told a couple of you, once you leave here, it's unlikely that you'll be coming back. You know, you're going to have to get out of Aslanti star, star Space. Um, once, you, once you accomplish your goal with the rune drive. So there is no coming back to Outpost Z. So I turn it over to you guys as players. It's your last day. What are y'all going to do here? I'm going to go get a new tattoo. Outpost Another tattoo? Forever. Yeah, well, no, I'm just adding like check marks to my list of knockout victories that I've got like uh, ta tallied up on my arm. It's a very quick procedure. Yeah, just and so bright, bright, you know, hooks you up. But well, I do want to say man goodbye of many to bright, talents. bright. Yeah, he yeah. really well eight arms, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do want to like say goodbye to bright, bright, and all that. You know, he's like mm -hmm. kind of the only friend I've made here. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, you can do that if you want. You head over there while you're getting your tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, what do you know? What do you say to him? Um, ugh, I was not prepared for the scene that I set up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I just tell him like, "Look, good buddy, we uh we've been through some stuff, right? I'm about to head off pretty soon here, but I just wanted you to know I, I appreciate everything you've done for me and for my friends. Um, and sorry for being a dick about you know the second fight." Oh, it is okay. It is okay because we're friends. And because we're friends, it is okay, Mike. I understand. I was also not okay about the second fight. Because the second fight wasn't okay, Mike. And I was upset because we're friends and you were upset. And because we're friends and you were upset, that made me upset. And I wanted the fight to be okay, but it wasn't. Because it wasn't okay, Mike. Agreed. <laughs> Quiet, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted you to know, you know, I do consider you a friend. I don't know if we'll ever see each other again. Uh... And if not, I've enjoyed what friendship we've had. Um, and I just, you know, just kind of short and sweet. He'd get his tattoo, get out of there. Maybe throw some low stakes dice for old times, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you're kind of just chilling with him. And he's, you know, kind of talking your ear off or whatever, going in circles. Uh, but at the end of that, he, he kind of stands up on his back two legs and then wraps around you the with hug? six of his legs. I get the yes. hug? Oh. Six, six legged hug uh, from Bright Bright Crackle, crackle Flicker, crackle, flicker, flicker dim. dim. Get it right. Yeah, bright Bright Crackle Flicker Dim and that's that's his exit from this game. Yeah. I'm not doing his voice oh, no, anymore. No, no, no. Uh, Come on, dude. We I'm can't bring him on down. to the Epic Tracer. <laughs> no, he's, Let's just no, bring everyone. 
We got room, man. Come He's just on. trying to get oh, half red on. on that I shit. I was just mm-hmm. about to say. So, like, Zeno, like, if turns ca- over to the if- side and just puts his hand on uh, Fell's shoulder. So, are we going to be taking in a new crewmate? Perhaps a chief mate? Or what do you have plans for with with half red? You know, I, I, I put a put a good bit of thought into this, and I really don't have plans. She's not coming. What? Oh, I'm so Damn. surprised. <laughs> Fella, no, I thought I knew you more than this. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can still surprise people from time to time. You shut around like some common player? <laughs> 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 oh, you man. slut, but you know I'm You slut, <laughs> hussy. <laughs> and at that, I guess uh, Fell has to go say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, so you you text up old half red. Mm-hmm. Hold text on her up. Oh, that's the list worst. Of emojis. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna need this. Yeah. All right. I like to think, yeah, so you got a bookmark of emoji list, don't you? Yeah, I'll show you the page I'm using. <laughs> I, know, I just I just needed to know that you had a bookmark of emoji list. Hey, man, okay. that language barrier, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to yeah. find love. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. So, 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 F- so Fell arrives at it's not love, though. Half Red's pipe. You know, she lives in a pipe. And, uh, <laughs> in case you I, had forgotten, she lives in a pipe. <laughs> Down by the we, river. She went and stayed with her. In he the, went and stayed the, the night pipe. with her. Yep. In the pipe. Fucking well, like, it's this pipe kind of opens up into a bigger pipe. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a pipe oh, that opens oh, up onto a, a chateau. 300 <laughs> square feet of pipe, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. I was expecting a fishbowl. Hey, I didn't. <laughs> Shit. So you knock on the door, and half Fred. Alfreda opens the door, and um, she she sees you, and with her little iPad, you know, she just gives you like a regular, straightforward smile face, um, and then like a wave. Yeah, Fell gives a uh, the kind of frowny with the sweat, and then a hug. The frowny with a sweat? Yeah, like the sweat drop, like uh, uh-huh. nervousness, kind of. Yeah. Um, she she hugs you back, but then, like, you know, two of her, like, little watery... T- I mean, they're not really tentacles, but, you know, like, she shapes her water into into these appendages, and she kind of pushes you away, and the squid fish in the middle of the bubble just looks at you eye to eye. And then on the iPad, it's just... Simply a question mark. Yeah, uh, Fell's gonna point at himself and then put a picture of an airplane taking off and then a rock and sad face. <laughs> um, <laughs> she she turns like a little a little kind of darker shade, uh, and then she um, kind of gives a thumbs up emoji. And then puts a clock emoji and a question mark behind that. Cool, bro. When you come back. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it's Fell's gonna do the the one of a dude holding his hands up in an X, like not coming back. No. You got X uh, gonna give it to y'all? Uh, <laughs> give us <laughs> you know? any other way to say <laughs> no. Brutal. Because brutal. language barrier just makes me, makes Fell come across as an absolute dick. Uh, oh my she, God. She, turn, she turns blue, like dark, dark blue. And it's just like a regular frown first, and then uh-huh. it gets scrubbed away, and it's like the frown with the single tear. And then that gets scrubbed away, and it's the one with like the tears just like coming down the cheeks. Um, and it, then, then it's just blank for a second, and she's pulled completely away from you. Yeah. At this point, and, and she's just this deep shade of blue, and there, and her iPad is like black, like just no emojis, nothing, just Fel, total black. Fell does uh, gets her attention and 
he points at himself again and then puts the the heart with the little crack like a cracked heart like breaking heart emoji and I as a player I'm trying to figure out how the hell you can convey that you're sorry but I am coming well, you can do like, that like little sideways you know like little s- sideways frown yeah well, the the bow you know the 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 like the the bowing emoji, actually yeah you know what I mean? like the that sideways frown and then a a bow and waits to see what her reaction is a bow like, yeah, like you're, like you're welcome for this performance <laughs> no, no like, it's like, like supplication like yeah oh, okay. throw some roses on the stage yeah um and she puts the she, she puts that emoji up that has the big black like puppy dog eyes you know what I'm talking about? With just like the real small little frown, mm-hmm. and like big black eyes and the arched eyebrows. And then and then she just sits there for a second and then wipes her emoji screen clear and just wraps her water around you, like completely envelops you in in her water. And drowns so. you and you die. <laughs> Bell, if Bell I returns, can have you. Bell returns the hug. Um, and then... And then puts up uh, a banana and then a squid. And then a question mark. Do uh, what? And she pushes you away. Like, this is like... <laughs> straight up. She gives you the X emoji bag. It's like, like okay, mm. okay. I'm, I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, what she does do... Is disappointed. <laughs> You're blowing this, dude. Uh, Fucking blowing she, uh, it. Fucking she, blowing uh, it. She puts up a little envelope emoji, mm-hmm. and then basically gives you her email address. Fell immediately responds or sends an email to her so that she uh, she has his address as well. She puts up a broken heart, and then just turns away from you. And the the she kind of shifts the iPad around behind her, so you see the back of her. You can see the iPad, and uh, it's just a wave. And it's I don't know it. It's like a wave, but like I guess with all the frowny faces and everything. Um, you know, because the wave looks a little happier than than what yeah. I'm thinking here. But um, there's not really an emoji for "I will miss you." <laughs> nope. Um, emoji artists get on it. It's a shame we can't use all the uh, emojis on Discord. Yeah. Can well, she? she puts, does she have? She, does she have Spotify? I'm can not she? Sure she can she start yeah. playing "I Will Remember You" by Sarah McLaughlin? <laughs> 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 You know what, Seth? I think that's worthy of an inspiration. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Because I didn't man. think about I didn't think about music at all, and of course she can call up some music. So if she calls up an appropriate song. We'll say it's Sarah McLaughlin. Go ahead and draw an inspiration. Lauren. Yeah. Sweet. I will gladly do that. All right. Uh, what'd you get? Let's see. Hey, it's a scratchpiration. Oh shit. From all Brian, right. old scratch. Out of Roswell, Georgia. What's going on? What's going on? He says, hi, I'm an inspiration. I see that you're trying to roll high in a D20. Would you like some help? <laughs> you're goddamn right I would, Brian. <laughs> Fucking clippy, dude. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Love it, dude. Love it. Thank you. Yeah, so she's playing that music as Fell kind of like looks to her. His mouth kind of opens to say something, knows that he can't say something, goes to maybe... Put an emoji in. There's nothing left to say. And he turns and leaves half red. <laughs> uh, don't be sad. He was just in it for the clo- cloaca. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there it is. Fel, Fel puts, there it uh, is. For himself to listen to on his way out, he starts listening to Emotional Haircut by uh, LCD Sound System. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. Well... You know, it had to happen. You've got bigger fish to fry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Off to bigger and better things. Yeah. Well, 
just dangerous things. Um, but that, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. Um, I forgot to tell you, Mike, whenever you're hanging with Bright Bright, he does give you your winnings for the fight. Oh yeah. I like money. Yeah. So he's going to give you, <laughs> um, he's going to give you 3000 credits. What? Shit. Yep. All right. I quit. There you go. <laughs> I'm retiring. I'm going to go on a bender. Gamble everything away. No, 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 no. Let's talk about the contract. I get seventy five percent of your earnings. Uh, no, you were my you were my corner man, not my promoter, you piece of shit. <laughs> but, uh, That's tight. Is it is anybody else want to do anything? I actually uh, want to post? change the song that Fell listened to on his way out. It's Oh Baby Good. by L C D sound system because it fits the moment so much better. Oh. Heard. Heard. LCD star system, bro. Sorry, Come on, LCD dude. star system. <laughs> yeah, get them right. God. Cool. <laughs> God. Uh, Ziva's going to do a little bit of shopping, but I mean, whoever meaningful. Uh, just, just tell me real quick what you're going to get. Uh, we're going to go for an ability crystal. Uh, okay. And what are you putting that to? Um, I'm going to take some uh, much needed advice and put it into strength. There you there go. You go. Very good. Yeah. Gonna live that soldier life one way or another. Okay. Yes. I think that was a, a wise choice. And Oren, Zeno, do you have anybody you want to say bye to on the, on nah, the station? I mean, o Oren might like... Uh, Don't like, worry about Hash, because he'll, he'll be... He's, you know, you still got to visit him. Well, that's the only ship, person so. that he really gives a shit about, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Fair. I think, that's, I think that's accurate when yeah. it comes to Oren. Um all right. Well, in that case, we will take you to the space dock where your ship is. And Hash kind of comes up to you guys as you're just kind of getting your stuff together. Kind of, you know, you're waiting on him to give you the go ahead because he's been working on your on your ship. And he finally emerges from the airlock. It's late. It's late at night at this point. He says, uh, hey. Hey y'all, I'm, I'm 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 ready to show you what I've what I've done. I I think that uh, you're gonna really like it. All right, sweet. I um, I hope you don't mind, but I I kind of added a added a room, a, a whole uh, a whole expansion bay to your to your ship, just because I felt bad uh, for what happened. And Ziva, I think that you're gonna particularly like it. I talked to Tamrin. And, uh, well, I, I don't want to spoil the surprise. Um, so co come, come and check it out. It's going to be, it's going to be poop two pods. Ziva, Ziva says, Ziva says, I swear to God, if this is a closet, I will marry you right here. Oh, <laughs> she's uh, kind of like uh, scampers inside. He kind of looks at you like, uh, um, like <laughs> he's, he's like kind of like, fuck. Um, <laughs> but you know what? You know what? What? I have a surprise for you guys too. Uh -huh. And that's Do a you? closet. <gasps> nuh uh, bro. No, no way. <laughs> yes. No fucking way. We have a map for the Epic Tracer. And uh, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of oh, this. Oh, really? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I got so excited. I was like, what? We're in a hallway. <laughs> yeah, so you guys step in to your kind of loading bay. And that's where you are now. Okay? And. So you're just kind of in this undercarriage of the ship where you can like store any cargo or anything like that, but it's really just kind of big empty space. And you know, you know this part of the ship. This is where many of you almost died in um, at Galta. So where that little yellow arrow is, is the direction of the ramp and your anti-personnel weapon is mounted on that rap ramp looking sharp as hell. Yep. Nice. And so, so then he takes you up the stairs um, to your ship. And I'm going to take you here. This is the first level of your ship. Oh, hell take yeah. Us there, take us there, Adam. Take us there. Oh, All my right. God. So, so the general thing here is that you are... This is kind of the main hub of the ship that you're in right now. All right. Um, there's a couple, uh, like, crew quarters here but those aren't yours 
Um, they're just kind of extra ones there. And so he's going to take you first to his surprise. So he walks you through past your crew quarters, which you guys have certainly seen before. I mean, he didn't do anything with that other than everything just looks really clean and polished. Um, and he takes you then through the galley. Okay. Which is where you are right now. So, you, you know, you're, you're all aluminum and stainless steel galley is super clean looking sharp. And then in the nose of the ship where there previously was in a space, he's hollowed that out and he's put in a theater what? on the ship. So there is a hollow vid theater in the, in the nose of the ship and on like ready to go on the big screen is baby's day out <laughs> <laughs> for Ziva. Uh, but you guys now have an actual theater and you can use this to also study any videos that you do come across in your travels, right? You can all kind of sit here and like really, you know, any, anything that you, any videos or anything you want to bounce up to that screen, you now have that ability to do. Nice. Uh, Very cool. The science lab is right here directly next to the um, galley. Give me that. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you've, I've got all the weapons and everything marked on here. And then your smuggler's compartment is in the tail end of the ship. Mm -hmm. um, and you have put in security measures. And so there's also a security pad that is there that kind of screens the smuggler's compartment. You know, so there's like a little hidden panel that if you open, opens up to a keypad, uh, you know, and, and so your smuggler's compartment and you got quite a bit of space to put there and then he takes you upstairs to the second level of the ship um, where you have your armory and training gym which is the room that you guys are in right now and then the med lab is up here to the north okay and then right. your guest quarters are also on this floor so if you ever have anybody that needs a place to stay, it's kind of like a bunk room where there's three bunk beds. So you have room for six guests on your ship uh, up here. And then if you have like VIP guests, there's those two room, rooms in the hub where you guys first came up the stairs. And then he takes you up to the bridge right here. And, and you know, all your stations are, are clean and like charged up and your names are on the back of each of your chairs like he's inscribed your names in the back of each of your chairs there's a little tiny cactus on Zeno station <laughs> that he that he has just just for you Zeno oh Bella she made it mm -hmm. I name my cactus. so this is a long time coming we're we're three books in you guys finally have a, a map for the epic tracer I hope hope you like it but this is your ship this is your nice. home awesome, that, that awesome. i have a question yeah how does sedona feel about us having inscribed our names on the back of the chairs of her ship oh it's our uh, ship <laughs> um she certainly doesn't feel bad about it in fact she was in on a lot of the design choices Aww. with hashish here to make this more yours than hers so it's been refurbished to to be your ship this is now the epic tracer is no longer sedona and co's ship it's y'all's ship mm. well this is absolutely fantastic thank you so much hash and you as well sedona oh it is my pleasure you you have earned it and i can't think of a better crew to to take over the the mantle of this ship and hash is like do you do you really like it i mean i'm sorry there's not a big closet but i really thought you'd like the movie theater hash you have outdone yourself in every possible way i, I absolutely love it don't you boys how is everybody like it yes oh, that's great uh, yeah, yeah. does it it's have fancy. does it have 2001 the space Odyssey? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you, Hash. <laughs> fuck you. Hey, Hash. We'll, we'll fucking see we'll you, fucking okay? See you. No, I almost sure spit beer Hash? out of my nose. Oh. <laughs> that's meta. That's a meta joke. Yeah, that's I like meta. That. That's deep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, Fel, what to do you, answer what do you think about Emily's or uh, Ziva's question, Fell's like, I'll be right back. And he just takes off and starts scurrying around and looking under panels and like doing a deep dive to to see what all's actually been done to the ship. Yeah, looking for yeah, cameras so, too, huh? Yeah, so you as you're looking for like, give me an engineering check just for good good Can I aid him? Fashion fun, you know? Alrighty. Uh that is a twenty two. Twenty two, yeah. Um so you you take the time to scour it and like you know, Hash is just kinda sitting there waiting like anxiously awaiting your thoughts on it, you know, yours particularly. And as you make your way through it, you see that all you know, there are no there are no cameras in place. That they've all been Well, actually, I take that back. There are cameras there but they're fed into a closed circuit for you guys to have control over. So he's, he's, you can at any point, like look at the various, you know, compartments of the ship and communicate and everything like that. So he has put in kind of like a video intercom system, or he's just converted the cameras that, um, Grasselix put in there, but you can rest assured that they're not feeding to anywhere else that they're, tightly networked into your own ship. Um, and he, uh, he has made all the panels extremely accessible for you. And, and, and like, I mean, you, you haven't seen work that equals this except for your own. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's almost like a, a, a maintainer did the work on the ship as opposed to some engineer brain headed engineer. That's, you know, yeah. Too smart like, for his own good. Right. Right. There's no, there's no flashiness. It's all about function where there needs to be function, you know, and you certainly appreciate it. So you make your way back up, uh, I guess, to the kind of galley is where we'll say you guys all are yeah. at this point. Fell is absolutely and- beaming, just grinning from ear to ear. And like, uh, sorry, sorry it took me a minute. Ziva, uh, this ship's incredible. Like, well, there's there's one more there's one more thing, Fell. What's that? Well, I I think that you're gonna need to to plug in right here, and he opens a port, kind of on the side of of the wall of the wall. He's like, I, I think you need to plug in your your exocortex here. The ship is missing an AI. And Fel somehow Fel's grin gets even wider, uh, and does that plugs in and interfaces with the ship. Yep. And as soon as you plug in it, like downloads your AI, and you can then all hear over the intercom. The AI says, "Hello, everyone. I am Mask. No, the Epoch Tracer." No. Someone please name me. Terry. (laughs) Terry, yes. Yes, I am Terry. It is a pleasure to serve all of you. I trust that Fel has programmed me in such a way to be a benefit to all of our, well, your endeavors. Very good. Cool. Um, And and Josh, I will just say to... To ease your mind, I will take over the AI from here, but I just wanted to hear okay, cool. how you characterized uh, Terry. <laughs> so, uh, I think it was Terry, baby. <laughs> so, You're um, welcome. <laughs> so, yes, now Terry, and you can just call out to Terry anywhere on your ship. Um, also, both, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think both Fell and Zeno have the ability to communicate with the ship at a certain distance, right? Should be able to. I mean, I know 100% for sure Fell can. Yeah, Fell definitely can because it's your it's your AI, you know. Ah, it's just it's a- Give me a port and I'll jack in. <laughs> um <laughs> and so Terry says, "Well, I th- would love to take this new vehicle for a ride." Would wait, like to- wait a second. I fly this ship, all right? Let's get one thing clear, Terry. It's understood, Oren. You shall pilot this ship unless you instruct me to autopilot. 
Hey, so like, I mostly shoot the guns, but like, I'll totally get you to shoot the guns sometimes. <laughs> I do not understand this function, but perhaps one day I will. Oh, when you level up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, so, it's, yes. It's, Terry's uh, still kind of a, a work in progress type thing. Okay. I am Aren't we all? Growing. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Um, and and then and so like Hash is just beaming with pride, you know, because everything worked like he he had hoped that it would. And then you can kind of see what passes as a tear for whatever for Ricci's Ricci's in in his eyes. It's just a boil uh, pops. Yeah, it's just a boil <laughs> pops. Oh, God. Uh, hash, you, uh, you, got, you got something right there, man. You might want to just you're yeah, oozing. I, I, I'm used to oozing fluids. It's kind of been the story of my life. Um, mm. Listen, it's been a real pleasure meeting all of you, and I, I can't say I've had a friend before, and now I have five. You always have a place here. At Does that count Terry? No. What about Sedona? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's cool and all, but I barely know her. <laughs> Fell pulls Ziva aside and says, Hey, hey Ziva, uh, what about him coming with us? Hmm. Can certainly ask. Hush. Yes. Tell me. How very attached to Outpost Z are you? It's my home. It's the only home that I've ever known. And my business is here. Understand. Just... No, though, if you ever find your way, because we will be, of course, heading back once we finish our business, uh, if you ever find your way out um, towards the pack worlds, you should um, come by and see us. In fact, and Ziva's gonna kind of like undo a necklace that she was wearing, uh, and she says, "If for some reason you show up to the pools of paradise, and I'm not there to greet you, give this to them." And they will know to treat you with the utmost respect. And he takes it like uh, 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 very reverently, you know, and he puts it around his neck and he like bows his head to you and he says, Ziva, you are too kind to me. Thank you. Thank, thank all of you. I, I don't want to see you go. Please don't. Don't die. I mean, please. Look, she just offered for you to come with us. Come on. No he, reason not to. He doesn't want to die either, is the thing. Yeah, we're kind of heading to a rough situation. Eh, we Everywhere we go seems to be a fucking rough situation. What's the difference? So, it's not like Out, Outpost Zed's a comfortable, like, cozy, nice, happy place. He, uh, he looks at you all very, very long doesn't say anything he says well I'm not not much of a fighter but I can't maintain your ship for you if the offer stands I I'll join your crew I I like having friends and I don't want to not have friends All right. Well, if the captain well, captain's cool with it, welcome aboard. <laughs> yeah, welcome aboard. <laughs> Look forward to um, having some help maintaining this whole thing. Um, and he'll say, you know, he'll tell you he's got to collect his stuff and ask Mike's help to load two of the pods. All right. Into <laughs> yep. into your ship. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's going to call Talmron, and he's going <laughs> to sell the space dock to Talmron. Right, right, outright. 
Sorry, this escalated quickly. Okay. <laughs> um, my dude just was like, this is my home and I don't, uh, you know, it's my business. And he like, just needed a little push. That's all. I'm fucking apparently. Okay. Emily is confused, but very excited to have him along. So right. Vote to have Fell take a level of envoy. <laughs> um, what? So here, here's no. the thing is how, the, how that's going to work. He is going to basically be your onboard ship mechanic. He will be able to function um, with the new comm rules as the uh, what's chief that mate, the first mate, in, the crew. Yeah, it's, it's not first mate. It's but chief it's, mate, uh, chief, chief mate, chief right? mate, chief mate. Yeah. So he'll you'll basically have a chief mate on on starship combat. Now y'all will have to take care of him. I'm not going to run him. But uh, <laughs> I'm not running him. I'm not running him. I'll run no. him. Uh, but, okay. Yeah, so, I'm bored. So you I have, can only do two shots. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you have a chief mate now on the Epic Tracer. You have a theater on the Epic Tracer. It's personalized to your crew. And you have two of those pods. Now, those pods cost money to maintain. So, like, if you want the benefits of the pod. You have to pay. You'll have to re-up. Yeah, you'll have to re -up the medicine that goes into it. Um, Good thing I just won 3,000 credits. So, at that, Sedona says, well, I, I feel like there's no time like the present. We must go. I, I hope that you have all said your goodbyes, but let us leave like a ship in the night. Uh, uh, yeah, let's blow this popsicle stand. Of course, we're uh, taking all the cool people with us anyway, so um, she waits Hash, at Hash. Yeah, Hash says, just just give me one moment, please. And you kind of see him walk through his space dot, kind of looking at the tools, kind of touching them, shaking his head at him. I mean, they're ruined, you know. And then he, you know, he just kind of walks through his space dot one last time. And he gets on the ship. Then as you guys take off, he's kind of sitting at the back, watching as Outpost Zed gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And he's very quiet. Fell walks up to him, puts his arm around his shoulder, says, Come on, Chief Mate. Let's go have a drink. <laughs> Do you have any whale pops? <laughs> actually, actually <laughs> yes. Fell, fell invokes the computer. Hey, uh, hey, Terry. Uh, we got any whale pops on board? I, uh, I have not generated this composition yet, but give me a few days, and I will try to come up with something synthetic that is similar to this request. Well, there you go. A couple days, man. Great I imitation whale pops. Imitation whale polyps. God. <laughs> it's all tofu God. anyway, man. You know. It's all, it's all tofu. Whale so it processed whale polyps. <laughs> all right. And so you guys are back in space now. Traveling in space. Um, Oren, you plot a course for Arellos. And the course comes up telling you that it's going to, you know, you got three days to get there. It's kind of a short trip. Um you know, relatively speaking. Okay. Cool. Doodly, 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 doodly. <laughs> not, no, no, not quite. No, no not bad. quite. My bad. Uh, um, <laughs> fucking blowing it. It's, it's okay. <laughs> uh, but now we're on the ship. Okay. And did any of you have any downtime activities that you wanted to do on the ship? Is there anything that you guys were thinking about trying out with the new character operations manual and stuff like that? So, Ziva's going to retrain. Okay. Uh, so, she's going to uh, spend the day focusing on intimidate. All right. Uh, she seems kind of like she her bark isn't as good as she wants it to be, so she's going to focus in more on that. <laughs> so, is Ziva just like standing in her cabin, like yelling in at herself in the mirror? In front of the mirror. <laughs> get better, Ziva! you got to get better! <laughs> You're fucking blowing it! You're fucking <laughs> blowing <you> it! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the way this works is you're going to spend that day doing that. 
Uh, what I'm going to need you to do is roll a skill check with Intimidate. Okay. That's going to be a DC equal to 10 plus one and a half year level. So that's going to be a DC 17. All right. If you succeed, you're going to gain a rank in Intimidate, but you're going to lose a skill rank and a random skill that has the same ability modifier. So you'll lose a rank in one of your other charisma skills. But let's see if you make the check. Okay. So roll an Intimidate check for me, please. Got to beat a 17. Roll to 13 plus 11. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I beat that. You have a plus 11 to Intimidate, and this is what you're trying to build on? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you now get one extra rank in, um, in Intimidate. Awesome. But now you're going to lose a rank in a random... And I'll roll the dice for that. So it's going to be charisma-based skills. So that's going to be bluff, diplomacy, disguise, or your profession hospitality. Okay. Oh, um, profession let's, hospitality. Let's go for that hospitality or disguise. I mean, that, that makes the most sense yeah. since you've been away from work for yeah. a while. You yeah. Know? All right. Don't so you think you should just hand wave that then? I could, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> um, what you're going to lose is one down in diplomacy. Which is oh. not bad, because, I mean, you get a bunch of boosts to that anyway. Yeah. So. And, I mean, it makes sense. If she's boosting Actually, Intimidate. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it oh. is diplomacy. Yep, oh, okay. it is diplomacy. Yeah, so you're changing your tactic from trying to talk yeah. things out to bullying people. I like it. So, take one off of Diplomacy and add one to Intimidate. That kind of rounds you out a little bit, actually. A, mm -hmm. a lot costs your charisma skills. So that's what you're doing for one of the days. Is, is, anybody else have any uh, any of these downtime activities they want to try? Uh, yeah, I've got one. Okay. Got, uh, I'm going to try and do Analyze Sample. Mm -hmm. I was really curious about this broken data cube thing. Okay. And wants to basically study it. So the way that works, you spend the day analyzing a physical sample of a creature or material. A uh, sample must have at least light bulk, and you must have access to a science lab or similar facilities for the whole day. Um, which you do. Which I do. So, result, you learn information about the creature or material as if you had taken 20 on a skill check to identify it, using the appropriate skill for its creature type, if it's a creature, or engineering if it's a technological or hybrid item, or mysticism if it's magic or hybrid. Uh, you must be trained in the appropriate skill or you gain no benefit. A GM okay. might rule that certain creatures or materials are too rare or unusual to be identified this way, which is probably the case, if I had to guess. So, and if I do it for more than more days in a row, I get a plus one circumstance bonus to my check up to a maximum of five. Okay. So I guess I need to roll an engineering check then, huh? Yes. Uh, that is going to be a 24. Okay, so with a 24, you know, and also what you learned from Oren and Zeno when they were first analyzing it, right? They, they kind of did some mysticism and stuff on it too. And what you, what you see is that this is a... The substance of which that this is made from comes from the shadow plane. And it's a very, very dense substance that just absorbs light. Like it just kind of, you know, it's almost as if it gives off shadow the same way a flashlight might give off light. You know, it kind of sucks light into it and, and dims things around it. Um, and that this substance is very cold to the touch, even, even while it's deactivated. And that with your engineering, you see that it has basically a little, a, a kind of a, a mini spell cache, you know, similar to what Zeno has, you know, as a technomancer, it has like this little spell cache in it that was, you know, basically caught casting this minor illusion upon the touch. Um, and so it's, it's this little illus illusion box that the more you study, you, you kind of see that it's engineered to like give people visions even though it's really kind of controlled illusions by, you know, higher ranking cult members that the Dralix are a part of. But you can now, you know, with Zeno or Oren's help, create a box like this and that they could put in a cantrip or level one spell into said box. Wait, awesome. you can like, like have a spell cache, like an extra spell cache? 
Uh, like, it's basically gonna be like um, a scroll. You know, you can basically make oh, okay. a scroll. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. Is it is it only Miz, uh, Technomancer, or can Mystics do it? Mystics can do it too, but it can only be a cantrip or a level one spell. And it can only be used by somebody who already can, would be capable of casting a uh, spell at that Well, level. what it's going to do, it's going to trigger, the way it works is that it triggers when somebody touches it. Okay. So, load it up with a Mystic Cure level one. You no, know, sure. an extra grenades, health baby. potion. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can do that too. <laughs> or sort of like spell baseballs. I was, just, I was just trying to save my spell slots. I mean, oh, no, no. What do do? <laughs> not a bad idea. It's not. It's a good idea. Okay. Um, very good use of your time there. Uh, Heath, do you have anything that Mike wants to do in the downtime? All right. So I was looking through all this new character operations manual thing, and I've got a proposition. And if the proposition falls through, I've hedged my bets. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so my proposition is Mike's going to come out and just announce abruptly at some point and be like, all right, look, we've got three days or so till we get to Arellos. I'm going to be holding combat and tactical training sessions in the gym. If anyone wants to join me, insert here, we will be doing the coordinate downtime ability, which means you'll get a bonus to uh, either aid another covering fire or harrying fire in multi-day you also get uh, a plus one to sense motive checks to discern secret messages between me and you uh, if I need to like tacticalize you some stuff and not say it verbally that said if nobody wants to take me up on that offer I'll just train by myself and just take the athletics bump anybody want to train with Mike Zeva can, might want to train with Mike. Can we train if we've already done it? Because it's one day. Yeah, How many? It's three days, so you, yeah. you could definitely train with Mike if you wanted to. Yeah, so like, let me lay this out. Day one, Ziva is in her room just kind of like hyping herself up, refocusing on Intimidate, and she'll you know focus on the ability crystal at some point in that, so she gets her strength boost. And then uh, Mike comes out and says, let's go fucking train. Ziva comes out and she's like, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> just like, she's all like hyped up, jacked up. Jacked up on her Tracked new like strength six. gym. Yeah. yeah. She's been in there uh yeah, doing her she, strength yeah, gym. She, she uh she crushed a few Red Bulls. Yeah. Got stronger, gives her wings. Well, yeah, yeah. I'd actually like to join you on that, so I'm gonna go ahead. Fell definitely will. Uh so Fell Fell can because he didn't do anything that gives him a bonus. Um Ziva You can. Because your no, your bonus wasn't time sensitive, so so Fel and Ziva and Mike are all coordinating. So make sure you guys make notes of this, because I will certainly forget. Um, and so Zach, did you have anything? Oh yeah, man. I mean, Orin's gonna do what he always does, uh, which is you know clean his rifle. But this time, uh, I'll get a bonus for it. So I'm gonna do a uh, maintain equipment. Which is just spending the day cleaning, fine-tuning, and otherwise maintaining a weapon or suit of armor. And um, if you maintain a weapon, the first time you score a critical hit with that weapon, uh, it deals additional amount of damage equal to half its item level to the first target hit. Oh, nice. So that's pretty cool. Well, late in that evening, you know, while, while Orin is cleaning his rifle, um, he's cleaning it in his cabin. He's thinking about his crew and how close they've become. Yet a small twinge of resistance still fills his heart. And as he's reassembling the firearm, his fingers trace the name inscripted on the receiver, Evelyn. And his mind drifts to a different time when he was a different man. The Sierra Scout disembarks from the larger Abadar Corp freighter, the Copper Carriage and begins its descent into Akaton's atmosphere. We zoom in and see Orin at the helm, wearing a smile that lights the man's face with an uncharacteristic glow, though it has been more frequent as of late. In the last year, since he met Evelyn on Vastitas 9, they have been arranging rendezvous when their respective assignments crossed paths. They've knocked boots across the packed worlds and beyond, 
each evening somehow surpassing the passion of the nights before. Oren loves the way Evelyn carries herself with grace and aplomb. The way she walks into a room and simultaneously projects intimidation and beauty. People seem to be drawn to her while at the same time trembling at her commanding presence. Evelyn is highly capable as an agent too. She could handle most weapons and moves with the subtle litheness of a cat. This ferocious elegance translates into the bedroom too, and Oren has never been more smitten. They have arranged to meet at a small village, little more than a glorified trader's post, but known to be free from prying eyes, allowing for unscrupulous business to be conducted. They both have missions from their respective employers, though Oren and Evelyn have made an agreement early on that discussion of their work would remain off the table. Oren is delivering a prototype fuel extractor developed by Abadar Corps to a mining company who are hoping to research the declining profits of fuel travel since the advent of drift technology. This new extractor not only collects resources at an accelerated rate, but it also uses fusion technology to amplify the natural fuel's combustion efficiency. This was highly top secret, and its success would mean a lot of money for Abadar Corps. However, Oren leaves the schematics and statistics to the scientists and accountants, and just focuses on flying as he continues to pay his debt to Abadar Corps. Even his indentured servitude can't affect his mood today, for he would be with Evelyn soon. He brings the scout in for a soft landing just outside the trade post, and then quickly disembarks to handle business with his assigned contact. They unload the crate containing the top secret extractor prototype, and Oren rides out on the ATV with the mining crew to make sure that it gets installed without harassment. Oren impatiently checks his watch as the miners insist on running a few tests before handing over payment. Finally, the miners are content, and they load the ATV with a few lockboxes full of cred sticks, an amount that would mean that Orn's debt to Abadar Corps would have been, will have been paid, plus some, for him to start a new life. Orn urges the ATV driver to hurry back, and as soon as they arrive back at the trade post, Orn secures lodging at the saloon and inn at the center of town. He showers as best as he can in the rusty water, and then slicks his hair back with a scented gel he picked up the last time he was in Castrovel. While checking his teeth, he hears a knock at the door. His heart skips a beat, and then he strides with as much controlled excitement as he can muster and opens the door. Every time Oren sees Evelyn, he is struck, as if her beauty weighs as much as the stars themselves. He smiles again, and before he can speak, the elven woman throws her arms around his neck and embraces him with impossibly soft lips. Hours later, Orin and Evelyn are enjoying some room service, their clothes still forgotten on the floor. Orin can still barely keep from staring, but manages to get the food into his mouth. Evelyn exhales after the savory meal and then says, So my dear, would you like to go to the fighting pits tomorrow? I hear they have a new Shabbat companion that is quite a sight to see. The gentle giant, they call him, but he must be more giant than gentle as he continues to win the fights. Hmm. Fighting pits ain't really my cup of tea. Besides, I think we should stay here and celebrate. Celebrate? Oh, have you been holding out news from me, cowboy? Uh, I, I know we ain't supposed, supposed to talk work, Ev, but this job I'm on, this, uh, this could be the one, and I can be free of Abadar Corp. Come with me, Ev. We could go anywhere, live our own life, be our own captains. Evelyn again gives that strange, sorrowful look to Oren, a look that he hasn't quite figured out, but attributes it to her elven heritage. This expression is replaced quickly by a soft smile that melts Oren's heart all over again. Oh, Oren, that sounds like a dream, but I still have my own debts to pay. I can't just leave my crew. I, I, I still have work. Oren smiles, almost expecting this response. Ev, this job, it's enough for both of us. Evelyn doesn't respond for a moment, but looks deep into Oren's eyes 
as if piercing his very soul. Her expression is unreadable now, and the silence lingers long enough for Oren to become a bit uncomfortable. And just before he nervously breaks the silence, Evelyn speaks up and says, Okay, cowboy, I'm in. I have to take care of some things tomorrow afternoon. We'll meet back here tomorrow evening. I'll grab some champagne and food so I can cook for you. Oren's eyebrows raise. Don't give me that look. Just because I haven't cooked for you doesn't mean I can't. We'll eat a real dinner to celebrate our liberation. And then I will liberate you of all your clothes. We can fuck till the sun comes up and then some. I... I love you, cowboy. I love you too, Evelyn. We come back to Oren in the Epic Tracer, staring blankly at his gun. He then throws it down on his workbench and turns his back on the inscribed rifle, his eyes wet, but with no tears left to shed. The walls around his heart, still tall and unbreached. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. M. M. Came, came right back You don't know in. how to feel about it now, huh? <laughs> uh, so Oren just, you know, he's in his room dealing with some stuff, I guess. Zeno, we haven't talked to, we haven't talked to you. What's Zeno doing on this, on this trip here? So, again, back on the uh, Epic Tracer, and he finds himself wandering a little bit, and he's, uh, for the first couple of days, he's either in his room or he's uh, looking around in the science lab and whatnot, and anyway, he's actually going to uh, focus on the downtime lounge for the third day. Uh, he's really been lounging for the last two days, honestly. But uh, in that, he's just going to be focusing on his work with the science lab, just kind of like toiling away at, at uh, formulas and whatnot, and off over to the new uh, movie theater and just putting on a couple of flicks here and there. On the third day, the results would be on the following day, you gain temporary hit points equal to half your character level. This effect ends at the end of that day. And you also gain a plus one morale bonus on the first saving throw you attempt that day. And cool. Very cool. So, after all that, when the lights get low and dimmed, and there's not much stirring anymore uh, on the ship, and just hear the low hum of the engine as it progresses forward, you see Zeno on the bridge after everyone has gone to bed. He's plugging away at various astrophysics at the uh, science officer station. And you can see the soft glow of the screen pouring over his profile, and then he stops. Then begins recording a message to send Tightbeam back to Absalom Station. The stars, they look very different today. The crew, they've been through a lot, physically, mentally. I've seen growth, courage, Fear and dread. We're here in the NIST system. Don't worry, this tight beam is encrypted. One of my own I've developed over the years. We made contact with Sedona. She's all right. Missing some memories, but intact. Functional. We've picked up a new crew member. Anyway, I've been browsing my personal files thinking of... Well, I'm sure I'm keeping you from... Uh, from your duties, I'm sure you're keeping the APA in ship shape, and hopefully not like this tin can. Gods forbid, or in a fellow no hear me. But how are you? You have been, you have our transponder codes. Right back. I think it's going to be a long time. I will get back to you, Tiff. And he ends the transmission, staring at the send or delete prompts, as if he's measuring his own courage. After a long pause, he sends it and then dims the display. Yeah, if I can yeah, send boy. it, yeah. bro. Oh you gotta gosh. send it. Oh my <laughs> <gosh>. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so Terry, Terry says, 
Where would you like me to send this transmission, Zeno 5? Send this to Absalom Station over to the APA headquarters. I can do this for you, Zeno 5. It should be there within a few days. Thank you. Then you guys all hear Terry over the loudspeakers, you know, kind of the intercom of the ship. And Terry says, we are deep in the drift. And I was wondering if you all would like to see outside. I can bring up visuals on your individual cabin screens. It is quite interesting out there. Perhaps you would like to see. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. Yeah, bring yes. it up. Um, does everybody pull it up? Everybody wants yeah, to see Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you sure. got something to show, man, we want yeah, to take a I mean, I'm right. in the gym, take a but peek at that there's a screen in there, you know? Yeah, and so, like, basically, it kind of does these faux windows that look out, you know. It's not actual windows in the hole, but it's kind of the way the cameras are set up. You, it looks like you're seeing out through the wall, right? And you see the, the familiar kind of milky purpleness of the drift that you're floating through. And a lot of times as you guys have been floating through the drift, you haven't seen a lot. It's just kind of looked like space, but with like a purple glow over it and milkiness and stuff like that. And you've heard that there are things that are in the drift, but in your drift travels before you haven't seen it. However, it seems as if you have are flying through a, a dense spot of matter that has been taken into the drift and Oren, yes you see out your window mm -hmm. the charred hull of the copper carriage what Zeno what you see out your window the drift beacon that you used to maintain impossible Ziva you see out of your window the ship that you were on when you got kidnapped into slavery. Mike, you see a small section of your parents' lab. Fell, you look and you see all these things too. And for half a second, you think you see Sky Dock, all of it. And then you blink your eyes and it's not there sure if your mind is playing tricks on you or not but Terry says these items this matter has been taken into the drift however I find it highly unlikely that each of these things would have personal relevance to each of you the drift is random I do not understand why these have all pulled together here. But I thought you might be interested in seeing it. I am a new AI, so I have yet to understand my analysis, but perhaps you all will have more thoughts on this. I would be interested to hear them if you have them. But for now, I am going to go into sleep mode. Beep boop. Some ain't right, y'all. So Zeno just rushes over to the science officer station, pouring over any data related to the drift, trying to ascertain as to how this is possible and any sort of physical relations that there are that could explain this impossible phenomenon. Yeah, there's no, there's no explanation. Like, is there, is it real? Like, can we do any kind of scans? Like, this is I mean, actual it physical is matter. It is, yeah, it is real. Can All we this tell? Shit has ended up in the drift. Mm -hmm. Well, so if we take it back, Oren, when you were murdered. You know, when you die. Remember, remember that time there. you were murdered. Yeah. Remember and that the, one yeah, time. Wow, I try to forget. Jeez. And, the, and the pirates took over your ship, and you died in space. And then you were picked up by Sedona. 
there was there was a purple light that happened right then and so that you know you and a piece of the copper was pulled into the drift and then you popped out of the drift right in front of Sedona's ship Zeno you of course know that the drift beacon floats in between the drift because you were there when when you got pulled into the drift and got your technomancer abilities Ziva you didn't know that the slave ship that kidnapped you had been pulled into the ship yet here it is Of course, Mike had no idea that How? stuff had been pulled into the drift. I mean, like, the planet Nakondas had, or not no, Nakondas, no, uh, Na- like Najin Korazias, excuse me. No, but just a, no, not even the whole thing. It's just like a piece of the lab. It's like it's, just a small, small piece is just floating in space. I guess that just always brings me, like, when, because I've read about that since I first started playing Starfinder, but it's like, what takes its place? Is it just like a black hole now on this, like, otherwise normal planet? Perhaps. Or it just gets filled in with air or water or whatever matters around it. It's just a jagged cleft. It's probably a big crater. It's just a big crater, yeah. I would imagine it's just a big missing I prefer jagged cleft. Okay, jagged cleft it is. (laughs) Um, so Zeno, yeah, you're sitting there thinking about stuff. What it, do you have any? I mean, the drift is definitely your bag. Yeah. Do you have? Do you have anything on this? Or so for this, uh, he just looks from the uh, from the science officer station and the calculations that are being performed to the drift that expands before him and back and forth and he's just racing through his memory files back to that time and so Zeno is looking back and forth between the science officer station and the expanse that lays before him as far as the drift and he calls everybody through the comm unit on his uh, armor uh, to meet him in the bridge. And he says, please, I need everyone's presence here in the bridge. Yeah, we need to talk. Yeah, too yeah, sweet. I thought I saw something that doesn't sit right. You can say that again, Orin says on the yeah. comms as he's walking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, like, uh, and yeah. everybody kind of reconvenes yeah. in, in the bridge. No. Or not, uh, are you going to the bridge, right? Take it to the bridge. Yeah, take it to the bridge. Can we find the bridge? Shut, Shut, up, Shut up, James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Can we find the bridge? Okay, some shit going on. All right. Okay, so everybody joins you on the bridge. You know, kind of one by one, they come in, and, and you're sitting there in the science officer's chair, and they kind of wait till everybody gets there, but they're looking expectantly. You know. So he is like, "Please, everyone, have a seat. I do have." some interesting news regarding this but this you might have seen some things peculiar and me and Terry have run an analysis as I'm sure no doubt all of you have that these are well I'm sure some of us have (laughs) as far as the scans here shows that these these sites that we've seen are are real but not illusions and very peculiar and this is very strange but this is not the first time that I've seen this these seemingly impossible things but somehow entirely random now I was not taught magic in the Arcana Miriam you see and he just kind of like holds up a hand and does a little bit of, you know, techno magic. And says, you see, my my powers were gifted to me. There was a time when I was working on a drift beacon, much like the one that I have seen now. And uh, somehow that drift beacon, some time ago, had been activated, somehow taking me into the drift rather than scattering my molecules into the cosmos. I cannot explain how, but a portal had opened before me, and a faceless stranger screamed. Something. Something to me. Before I knew it, nanobots 
had integrated into my system and I have had these abilities ever since. But regardless of all this, it hasn't impeded my progress in Drift technology and in fact it has enhanced it. But I know everyone is just distracted with this. But the Aslanti have an alternative mode of travel, something we don't understand and something they don't either. Now, they have it, and if only I had it, perhaps this could aid in any explanation to this, but perhaps my work would finally be complete. And he looks at the crew that he served with. Now's the time to focus and retrieve this artifact, not focus on the artifacts of our past. Whatever you say, Zeno. So, so Zeno, you, you're telling me that 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 all all the sky dock, like I, I saw the entire city. I'll say this for the rest of you: that none of y'all saw sky dock. Everybody, all of you saw everything else that everybody saw. But Josh, you're the only one that's Fell's the only one that saw sky dock. Now, Fell doesn't know that, but just mm-hmm. so your characters mm-hmm. know, they didn't see. It. I, I, I saw the entire city. That. You tell me that's all gone? My home is gone? That I do not have an answer for. But what I can tell you is that I also saw the drift beacon that took me into the drift. I know it. I've seen its serial number. That is the same drift beacon. And I saw the ship that pirates raided when I was on it. That I don't, can't... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Just, I'm really fucked up right now. Ziva shared that memory with you at some point, so she would look over at you like, oh, fuck. Um. In this lull, I want to give John an inspiration. Nice. Yeah, yeah, dude. Awesome. Yeah, man. I, think you, I think you earned that one. Oh, buddy. yeah. Um, Thank you. So go ahead and draw an inspiration. All right, drawing... And we have ah an Alex inspiration. Oh, oh shit. what's up? Um, our Alex. patron Alex, uh, also our artist too, yeah. our resident yes. artist, yeah. our resident artist, um, and from British Columbia. Uh, uh, Canadian, eh? yeah, <laughs> that's right. Eh? Uh, I mean, obviously British, right? <laughs> <laughs> And so he says, so I've been hanging out with Weldy lately, and he asked me to give this inspo to you on his behalf. (laughs) This is great. Whoa, dude. (laughs) This inspiration is like totally blowing my mind, bro. Reminds me of this one time. I was in this like super dope transport ship, and I was like at the front of the ship, and I needed to take a wicked piss. So I went to the back of the ship to piss. And even though I was walking one way, I was actually traveling the other way. Doesn't that blow your mind? Is this this all an elaborate setup to just post? I'm going to go lie down now. (laughs) I'm going to go lie down now. Where am I? Oh, that, was, that, that was that was awesome. Appropriately Alex, you take, yeah. 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 Alex you take an inspiration. Yeah, Alex, take an inspiration. Okay, so Tiffany, as you guys are sitting around this table trying to figure this out, Zeno, you know, he thought he was helping you out. I think it probably just confused you all more. One hundred percent. However, you do know a little bit more about your your scientist and your technomancer friend, and at this point, um, Terry comes back up and she says, I hate to disrupt this meeting of the minds, but we are approaching your destination. I suggest that everybody strap in as we make our transition from the drift back into normal star space. Approaching Arellos in ten minutes. Well, let's take our positions then. Yes, um, Zeno, thank you for sharing this um, uh, explanation. Um, we will 
focus a little more on this when we're not approaching the new portion of Aslanti space. Everyone ready? Uh, in uncharacteristic fashion, no. Mike is more pale than you've ever seen him. Just kind of like the thousand yard stare through his own hands, like right in front of his face as he's leaned over. Like seeing a chunk of his home world out in the drift is like really bothered him on top of all the new information. And being that he is uh, of a horribly low intelligence, he's not able to really process all of this and is. Uh, I mean, damn near, like, catatonic, I would almost say. Like, he just can't get with all of this new information. And it's, He's like, shook. It's devastating. Yeah, shook in the... Would you say you're shaking? Uh, <laughs> I would not say that, because... Because I'm, I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, I would say he's bothered. Does he just is that a condition? Oh, it's not. I don't think bothered is a condition. <laughs> he's hot and bothered is. He's not. He's hey, not that sorry. kind of bothered. Uh, no, no. This is just a lot for him to take in. Um, I mean, it, well, he was already bothered by the the seeing like some of his home world, like childhood shit. He hasn't seen since he was like six or seven, you know. Um, and then all of the new shit on top of that is just like he's been kind of oddly happy go lucky through all the horrible shit so far, but yeah, he's, he's uh, shook, not shaken. <laughs> is, is that, like, obvious yeah, to everybody? Yeah, I mean, I like, mean, if, if you know Mike, it would be out of character, at least. Uh, and Ziva would kind of, like, turn to sort of try and put her body kind of between her and Mike so that they wouldn't necessarily, that everybody else wouldn't necessarily see or hear the conversation as well. Uh, but she'd kind of look up at him and kind of like pull him down a little bit. Okay, look at me. Look into my eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Do you know it's right? We can't focus on the past. Focus on now. Focus on us. Focus on me. Where we're going. What our task is. We are going to finish this, and we are all going to be fine. Do you believe me? Uh, 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 I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, just tell me what, just tell me what to do. It's fine, it's fine. I'm good, I'm good. And he kind of shakes himself off, quite unconvincingly. <laughs> But he tries to come back into some semblance of doing the normal protocol of things. Hmm. Orin calls like from the comms, like, get your asses up here! <laughs> <laughs> um, at that, Terry says, we are arriving in 60 seconds. Strap in now, please. And, and, uh, Hash is like, I'm just gonna uh, strap him down here in the engine room. All, all right. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get in your in your way. Uh, and Sedona is gonna strap in, kind of in the jump seat, kind of in the back of the bridge. And I assume you all strap in, right? Yep. yep. No yes. doubt. Yeah. And so you slide out of the drift and back into normal star space, as it were. Um, and as you, as you exit the drift and you're entering the vicinity of Arellos, a familiar scene, but amplified is before you. You've been here before. You've done this before. This, this whiplash of, of deja vu hits you because when you slide out of the drift, six as Lanty drones descend upon you as soon as you come out of the drift well, what the fuck? in the asteroid field that you're in, that you emerge into, that you're surrounded by asteroids. You can see the biggest asteroid in front of you and six drones coming your direction 
and we'll fucking see oh, it. Oh, oh, come on, not drones, our arch nemesis. You picked a our great arch spot nemesis. to suck out the drift, didn't you? <laughs> Ziva says, uh, it's all right, they're only drones, they're not doors. Terry says, I, I'm sorry, I'm still new. At and they're this. also, at least they're not desk. Yeah, desk, <laughs> it's fine, it's just drones, no desk, no doors. Uh, Adam's, we'll see. Uh, not Adam, uh, uh, Mike's biggest, like, nemesis is just shit you can buy at a hardware store. <laughs> 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 This episode has been sponsored by Roll20. This is how we roll.